Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design. In today's program, PJ Meets the Pros, we have Greg here is going to share his experience with us for the laser cutting and laser engraving. Are you ready? Let's get started. My name is Gregory Chopchin. I've been working at Flash basically since I've grown up into the industry and I've become interdisciplinary with a wide variety of materials and jewelry expressions. For my designer, I mean, they would like to know what kind of a file is the file that for most of the laser engraving job needs. Most preferably, it would be a .dxf file that you would need to save whatever you're working on as, although JPEG files do work, but the resolution and quality of the graphic will be compromised if they don't meet what needs to be transferred. What is the lowest resolution? We know like higher is better. So let's say I have my dog's picture. Now it's going to depend on the specifics of each picture. Due to each picture being individual, they're going to appear differently once they're transferred onto whatever material we're processing. If it looks like it will look good due to its appearance, as you see it before on material, usually it will transfer well onto material as well. But if you can save it as a .dxf file, that's preferable. What about if some line work? So if I want some line work look like engraving, right? So only black and white. Uh, how do I do it? Do I do it in the Illustrator or do I just hand draw and then kind of scan? What is the best uh, quality gonna come out from those images? Um, regarding line work, if you can work in Illustrator and play with the strokes, that would be your best option. How deep the engraving can go? You can achieve depths of maybe double digit uh, millimeter, or we can do a surface etching that is virtually imperceptible regarding depth. So the way I work here is I will inspect a file and I will relate to the client immediately as to whether or not their vision is possible. So is it possible to work with like really like light dome surface uh, for the laser engraving but still have a really crispy image in there? Yes, so anytime you have a convex surface, you're going to run into problems. The curve is going to skew or warp whatever it is that you put atop the convex surface. Mm -hmm just as well as a concave surface will be affected in a similar manner. It's right. something to keep in mind. Right. So if you are a CAD designer, you might want to thinking about what is the best outcome, whether you're going to do 3D printing or you're going to do laser engraving if you want to have an image on top of it, right? So if it is something that's completely flat, Laser engraving is actually come out really nice detail, but if you have some sort of a dome surface, you might want to build it uh, in the CAD and have the casting to do the, that dome surface to, to have a better result. In flashing uh, manufacturing here, what type of the metal can you engrave? We work with basic alloy mm -hmm. material to precious, such as platinum, palladium, gold, high carat. So is there a limitation on the thickness of the material? For laser engraving, no. Mm -hmm. For laser cutting, we can cut up to three millimeter reasonably. So that's about the laser engraving. And if you have any questions, you can also leave your comment below and I will ask you know, Greg to you know, consulting or maybe he will give us some suggestion. And next I would like to talk about the laser cut. So we do have a laser cut machine here. Yes. And what is the capacity? I mean, how big is this sheet can fit in for a laser cut? So the parameters of the bed are 18 by 18 inches. And you're looking at three millimeter tops for thickness to cut. You can go as thin as a quarter millimeter, half a millimeter, but just think practically. Um, if it's something that you're going to do further processing on, you want to make sure that your file is constructed in a way where you can still process it without it foiling on you. The laser machine that we have for cutting is specifically designed for the jewelry industry. Mm -hmm. 
It is designed to process precious metals, silver, platinum, gold, but we're still able to process more low grade metals such as brass, aluminum, stainless steel. It just depends on what you're looking for, but as long as it can fit within an 18 by 18 bed, we just have to discuss the file. Mm -hmm. I would need minimum a two inch by two inch plate to work with. So for the laser cut file, what kind of file do you need? I would need a .dxf file mm -hmm. if you're able to have it completely assembled so that it will go right to cutting. What I mean by that is if you've closed all the spaces in your design so mm -hmm. that it can be one coherent piece mm -hmm. in order for it to cut out. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not, usually I get clients that send me illustrator files and I'm able to adjust them for cutting. How much is it to do the laser engraving? So I could start by giving three different examples, mm -hmm. such as let's say a simple wedding band. Mm -hmm. If you're working within the parameters of silver, 14 karat, 18 karat, you're looking at an inside ring engraving starting from about $25. Again, varying on complexity. So if people want it to run along the entire circumference of the band, you're looking at a different price. More often than not, I work with estimates. Mm -hmm. So there is no fee for consulting. Mm -hmm. Contact me and I will be able to communicate with you in order to find middle ground regarding mm -hmm. what your vision is and whether or not it's possible. Okay. Um, Secondly, let's say you have a flat disc engraving. Depending on the complexity, you, it's starting from $25, and then it can go anywhere over under, depending mm -hmm. on complexity. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, if you have a project that perhaps you're not sure of the range or scope of what it could take, let's say you have large volume, mm -hmm. you, you need to duplicate a lot. It depends on the complexity and then the quantity. So pricing will be reflective of that. So also, I'm curious, and I believe a lot of my fans is curious, what laser engraving and laser cut can do for jewelry uh, application. I work with a lot of screenshotted images. For example, let's say signatures or doodles or something of high sentimental value mm -hmm. that people would like to memorialize the material. Do you have some sample to show us what a laser cutting can do uh, for the jewelry application? A best illustration of it is three examples that we're going to share with you. For example, I have a nameplate that we cut out named Hope. And this nameplate is interesting because it's only eight millimeters by four millimeters in dimension. So it's super tiny and it's totally usable as jewelry. Another example that's illustrative is a monogram that we have, which is about an inch by an inch. Also, thirdly, we're able to work on scale like such, where you have stainless steel that is about two, two and a half gauge, two and three quarter, and you can also similarly get an output like that. Thank you, Greg. It's a lot of uh, good information that you share with us. So now I have more understanding as a, as a new designer coming to the industry, not just about 3D printing. I also have a laser cut and laser engraving that I can utilize. And we definitely will contact you, you know, if you have more uh, questions from my uh, subscribers. So again, if you have a more question, leave, you know, you will comment below and I will ask Greg for you. Thank you again for the great help. Thank you, DJ. Okay, so we are back here with Matt, uh, Matthew again. So this time Matthew gonna talk about laser welding and how in other applications. So uh, Matthew, can you, can you like, the first question, can you weld two different kind of a material together? Yes, you can weld gold material together, no problem. Let's say 14 karat white mm -hmm. or 14 karat yellow mm -hmm. or 18 karat white, 18 karat yellow, no problem. or. 14 to 18 karat, no problem. Uh, 18 karat rose gold, white to 18 karat rose, there's no issue. But there's one single issue. My recommendation would be when you have assembly job, mm -hmm. that you are assembling something mm -hmm. and you welding together the 18 karat and 14 karat, my recommendation would be you can use, you have to use solder. Mm -hmm. at at that point because 
the reason I'm saying that sometimes it's not strong enough to hold together. Mm -hmm. What do you mean is having the la laser to tag in place and, ho and flow the solder around it? Yes. Okay. Which it would be helpful because that way you have a stronger bond. Now, if two items, let's say you have a partial silver ring or partial silver bracelet mm -hmm. and you want to weld that silver to gold, mm -hmm. my recommendation is you can again tack it together strongly mm -hmm. and weld it mm -hmm. in the end with the solder. Mm -hmm. That's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. But when you have a weld together with the solder, mm -hmm. it will last much, much longer. Mm -hmm. When you solder white gold and yellow gold, what solder do you use? I use the yellow gold solder. Mm -hmm. I don't use white solder because white solder is higher higher because you have nickel in white solder. Right. You mean when higher you, temperature? Yes. Okay. And then you will melt your item. But the stainless steel will bond very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I get clients to bring, they bring me stainless steel with silver. Mm -hmm. They bond together very well. Mm -hmm. But titanium to stainless steel or stainless steel to titanium, it will not bond very well. Or titanium to titanium, it will not bond. Very what is well. about silver to silver? Is it silver to silver, you have to have very powerful laser. Mm -hmm. Regular small lasers will not work mm -hmm. for uh, welding together silver. The reason, because it will take a lot of effort the laser to generate heat mm -hmm. in order for it to weld it together. Um, can you talk about the laser welding compared to traditional soldering? Laser welding to traditional uh, soldering is basically when uh, you have an item and you have uh, precious stones on it, okay, and a part is broken. Laser welder will be the number one medication for that mm -hmm. application. Because the, it's a local heat. Because it only heats up at one spot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't heat up all the all the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I get a lot of repairs coming in, like uh, antique jewelry or uh, sentimental jewelry that mm -hmm. they are all broken, either in platinum or in uh, in precious gold or gold field or all those all those metals. I use laser, mm -hmm. and my work is completed about. 85 percent mm -hmm. with lasers mm -hmm. and last 24 years whatever i repaired with the laser none of them came back as redo or broken a solder come back or tarnishes the color i see so that's the difference or let's assume you have a mother's ring and mm -hmm. uh, the mother have another child they want to add another stone to the to that existing ring or right. a pendant or a bracelet. Laser will do the job because you don't have to worry the other uh, precious stones mm -hmm. to be in a heat. Can you give us some suggestion what uh, other things that laser welder can do for the jewelry application? Whatever it's broken in the precious metal, it's fixable with laser. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do retipping mm -hmm. with the laser on a color stones, but you have to have experience to that. Mm -hmm. If you have a shaky hand, it you is, hit a stone. <laughs> you can hit the stone and fragile the stone right away. It breaks. Right. Okay, but you can uh, you can use retipping. You can fill pit holes. Mm -hmm. You can put. Uh, you can use for uh, adding the stones, or you can use for. All kinds of variety of application that it will help to work your job faster. So Experiment. that does increase the speed yeah. of the, the oh work. yes yeah. oh yes it will increase the speed almost seventy five percent. Wow. Okay. Yes, you yeah. would save money. So I would like to thank Greg and also Matt again, you know, to you know share with those knowledge with us, and um, we'll come back to check on if we have more questions. Again, if you have a question, leave the in the comment below, and um, I'll see you next. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.